With Final Fantasy VII Rebirth just around the corner, I've made it my personal mission to get all the Final Fantasy VII trophies available, starting, of course, with the 1997 classic. After the greatest opening scene of all time, this ex-soldier gets off the train, kills some guys, bam, first trophy for winning my first battle. Just an aside, a lot of the strats I'll be using are based on a beginner-friendly 100% speedrun route created by Zero Kinos and Chrono7114. I want to make it clear that this isn't the only way to play Final Fantasy VII, I just thought it would be fun to try some of the more techy things this game has to offer. I'm introduced to Cloud and Barrett, run through the reactor, use my first limit break and get a trophy just for that, blow up Guard Scorpion with some Thunderbolts and blow up the reactor. Now, the first important dialogue choice of the run appears for a certain trophy related to dates later on. Basically, I want to disappoint the females of the party and big up my boy Barrett. Don't worry, I will highlight all the choices I make. I buy this flower, meet Tifa, the first female I'm going to disappoint, give the flower to Marlene, tell Tifa I don't really want to drink, say sorry, complain about Barrett's snoring and move on to the next reactor. After struggling to open a door, I take down Airbuster with a couple of limit breaks, it explodes, and Cloud is manly in front of Barrett before he plummets to his death. But instead of Cloud dying, I meet Aerith, the second female I'm going to bitterly disappoint. Roll the barrels wrong so that she has to beat some people up, go back to her house and let her know that Cloud is taken, sneak out, buy some grenades for throwing purposes, get caught by Aerith, offer to take her home again, and head to War Market and Don Corneo's mansion where the third trophy is up for grabs. In order to make Cloud the consummate cross-dresser, I head to the dress shop, then to this shop owner to talk man stuff and do a favour for him. I get Korean barbecue and say it was alright for a coupon, exchange this coupon for a digestive, head to the inn and buy the most expensive vending machine item and give it to the previous shop owner for a diamond tiara, then I talk to the dress shop owner and ask for something soft that shimmers and give the digestive to this poor woman in exchange for the sexy cologne. Cloud tries the dress on, but to complete the look, I have to beat this guy at squats. Once that's over and Cloud and Aerith are fully dressed up, I head back to the Corneo mansion, pick up Tifa and get chosen by Corneo as the belle of the ball. I tell Corneo that Cloud is into Barrett and then our heroes chuck a bunch of grenades at a sewer monster. I also nade Reno to smithereens and tell Marlene that Cloud isn't really that into Aerith. After a lot of climbing, and I do mean a lot, some stealth and some puzzle solving, Red 13 joins the team. I tell Barrett to take Aerith to safety, I throw some grenades at this thing, and set my party to Barrett and Red 13 afterwards. The gang gets caught, Cloud tells Tifa that it's going to be hard to get out, and then I check up on Barrett, Red 13, and Aerith in that order. There's some prison breaking and then dead body finding, and then I check a load of grenades at the 100 gunner, the heli gunner, and Rufus and his dog. After the iconic motorcycle scene, I throw grenades and lightning bolts at Motorball, and I get out of Midgar with Barrett and Red 13 in my party. I go to calm for a massive flashback and after cheering Barrett on, tell this woman she's full of it and her daughter that she's got it right. Then I grab Choco Mog from the Chocobo Ranch and use a rather neat trick to sneak past the Midgar Zolum and move through the Mithril Mines to Fort Condor. Here I tell this old guy that I'd be happy to join his cause to get even more Barrett good boy points before shuffling Tifa into the party and heading to Junon. Here I buy more explosions and take on Bottoms Well. I use Cloud to cast Bio and get Poison to stick onto the big flying lizard before a bunch of limit breaks and grenades bring the bad boy down. There's CPR, Shiva, Dolphin shenanigans, marching bands, shopping and dancing minigames before getting on a ship, hitting Aerith and Tifa with the old fashioned I dunno, making Barrett and Tifa sad so they take 30% less damage, and Cloud furious so that I can spam his limit break against an overbirth, whilst Barrett and Tifa throw grenades. It turns out the fight is super tight and I choose to risk it all and forego healing in lieu of throwing more grenades and doing more damage. Despite Cloud and Barrett falling down and Tifa hitting double digits HP, I do out damage the boss and get Ifrit as my reward. After riding a roller coaster without carriages, I'm forced into a pincer attack fight, which I get out with summons, grabbing a trophy for summoning for the first time. 
I steal a bomb's right arm and get to the gold saucer where I choose to play with Red 13. I meet up with Ket Shi in the Wonder Square and in the Battle Square I get thrown into prison. In Barrett's quest for revenge, I choose Red 13 as our third party member, learn the Matra Magic and Laser enemy skills for later on, and kill Dine with that right arm that I stole earlier. Then I pick up Ramu, and after winning the Chocobo race, my fifth trophy pops up. From there, I learn Aqualung and then head to the Mithril Mines. Why? Well, in order to unlock limit breaks, each party member has to kill a set number of enemies, and I need to do Aeriths now for reasons. Anyway, I run around in this one room and in the enemy encounters I have Aerith use Matra Magic to kill stuff, Tifa to heal and Cloud to steal ethers from Arc Dragons so that I can keep the ladies MP topped up. Eventually, Aerith kills enough enemies to earn two more of her limit breaks and I also grab this Mithril from the Sleeping Man after getting into a number of battles ending in double zero, double one, double three, double five, double seven or double nine. In my case, I was on battle 111. With Tifa and Aerith in my party, I head all the way back to Gongaga, defeat Reno and Rude at the same time, meet Zack's parents and completely blank Tifa and Aerith on the way out. I also steal a spiderweb from Amantis and pick up the Deathblow materia. I head to the beach to learn Big Guard, a super important enemy skill, and then stick Barrett back in the party and go to Cosmo Canyon. Here I talk to Barrett about the origins of Avalanche and bring both him and Ket Shi into Bugenhagen's observatory. Some more Avalanche talk later and Cloud, Red 13 and Tifa head into the Gi Cave where I pick up the Death Sentence enemy skill. Some lasers and aqualungs deal with the spiders and an elixir deals with Gi Natak. Then it's time to get Aerith's other limit breaks by using the ones we've already unlocked by finding a Valron outside Nibelheim, manipulating it with Tifa and using Dive Kick on a Hypered Aerith, we can ramp up her limit gauge and use her limit breaks quite easily whilst Cloud keeps her hyper and healthy. Doing this I get the remaining limit breaks, except the most important one, and then head into Mount Nebel where I grab the Power Soul, a vital weapon for Tifa. The way Power Soul works is that Tifa deals more damage depending on when she's near death, double damage for when she's in critical HP and quadruple damage for when she's death sentenced. And yes, these do stack and I will be abusing them. This next fight against Materia Keeper is super interesting and probably has my favourite speedrun strat that I'll be employing. Basically, I want Red 13's magic plus level to equal exactly 59, so I give him magic and summon materia until that's the case. It's vital that poison is on him, otherwise this won't work. Then when the fight begins, Tifa uses big guard and Cloud uses mini on Tifa. Then Red 13 casts bio. I want the bio to deal exactly 99 and poison him, and wouldn't you know it, I get it first try. After three ticks of poison on the fourth tick, the Materia Keeper will do exactly 7,777 damage to itself thanks to Lucky Sevens and the fight is over. Now if the poison doesn't land, it's Cloud's job to heal the Keeper up to full. If the poison does land but does less than 99 damage, it's Mini Tifa's job to hit the Keeper one damage at a time until you make up whatever you've got left. I get counter-attack as a reward that I equip to Tifa straight away. After that, I meet Sid in Rocket Town and take on Palmer. Big guard for everyone, death sentence on Tifa and Red 13 is on bio duty. Now, this is the part of the game where bosses start getting super fast. And so it's time to abuse the ATB weight trick mechanic. Weight tricking is having the ATB on weight and as soon as you enter any of the sub menus or target someone, time stops and all ATB bars and effects timers are paused, including death sentence. I do this whilst my attack animations are going off to allow my team to get more attacks in and increase the time Big Guard is up, whilst delaying the enemy's turn and slowing down that death sentence timer. This is a mechanic that speedruns have to know, and I'll be using and abusing this for the rest of the run. The problem I had was that Poison didn't stick on Palmer until way later on, and Tifa also kept missing the fat guy somehow. So Tifa actually died towards the end because I'm rusty on ATB weight tricking, which was really irritating, but a win is a win nonetheless. 
With the tiny Bronco in hand, the party head to the Gold Saucer and I get the Keystone by fighting to the death, uh, by which I mean Cloud runs away. Now this actually counts as falling in battle and so I get another trophy for the party falling. And now all my dialogue decisions and actions that I've outlined come to a head. My reward for making Aerith and Tifa miserable and Barrett the happiest man alive is a date with him. Oh, oh yeah, and a trophy. Yeah, don't forget the trophy. I then hand over the mithril to this hermit and grab this great gospel and give it to Aerith for her limit break trophy. It's time to head over to the Temple of the Ancients and take down a big bad dragon. I get big guard on the party, death sentence on Tifa, and then after lasering Tifa into yellow HP, use Cloud's cross slash limit break to paralyze the enemy. Death blow is guaranteed to hit paralyzed enemies, so with yellow HP, death sentence, death blow, and long range materia, Tifa is now doing 16 times damage from the back row. I get the visible Bahamut materia for a trophy and then it's onto Demon's Gate. Same idea, except this wall is fast and immune to paralyze, but not to slow, so I throw that spider web I stole earlier. Then with the same big guard death sentence laser set up on Tifa as the previous fight, together with that fury ring I bought in Gongaga to give a berserk, our opponent is just another brick in the wall. In the City of Ancients, I grab Kajata, something unimportant happens, and then it's time for Genova Life. Genova 2 is prone to paralyze, so the big guard into death sentence, into laser, into cross slash, into death blow strat works here, and another one bites the dust after just two attacks. In Norse Pole, I pick up the hero drink and the vaccine, the worst mini game in Final Fantasy 7 happens, and then in the snowfield, I grab added cut and immediately pair it to Tifa's death blow. So now she can do up to 24 times damage in one turn. The witch falls to a stiff breeze, I grab Alexander, and then I grab magic breath inside Guy Cliff from Stilver. The icicles die to magic breath plus laser, and then it's time for schizo. Big guard, death sentence, and added cut means Tifa's death blow attacks do massive damage. I use Cloud to keep everyone healthy and Sid to maintain big guard when it runs out. The right one goes down first, then the left one, and I'm good. I grab Leo Bahama and then Genova Death gets the big guard death sentence cross slash death blow treatment too. After definitely crossing the wind trap on the first attempt, I let a bunch of cutscenes play out and the next important thing that happens is grabbing level 4 suicide from the squirrels for reasons. In Medeal I grab the very important curse ring which boosts the wearer's stats while inflicting death sentence so naturally this is going to go on Tifa but that will have to wait for a bit as Tifa temporarily leaves. I get the Fort Condor huge materia by lasering and magic breathing the bad guy to death and I get Phoenix as a reward. In Coral, it's the same deal. Aqualung and Laser deals with everything, as well as one roll of the dice. And stopping the train gives us Catastrophe, which I'll use later. Something unimportant happens. Then, after some death blows and morphing ghost ships into guidebooks, it's time for carry armor. Big Guard sets this fight up nicely, with Matra Magic disabling the arms so they can't pick Tifa up, and she death blows it to death. I pick up the Leviathan scales to use later in Wutai, sink their battleship and pick up my third huge materia. Ignore this guy and pick up the key to the ancients for later use. I head on over to Rocket Town where I fulfill Rude's wildest fantasies and Tifa fists him. I also unlock the fourth huge materia and pick up Venus Gospel. Then in Cosmo Canyon, I pick up my reward for getting all four huge materia and both Bahamuts in the form of Bahamut Zero and my 10th trophy. Back to the City of Ancients and then Diamond Weapon spawns. A bit of sidetracking though as I go to the Sunken Gelnica to take on Reno and Rude, stealing their stuff and death blowing them both to smithereens. After some scavenging including Conformer and Double Cut, I finally pick up Yuffie for a trophy and a surprisingly big power spike because Conformer gets more powerful the tougher the enemy is. I head to Wutai and do the side quest and despite having no materia, a curse ring to Tifa is still more than enough to win this fight. After some materia arranging, Yuffie completes the Pagoda thanks to Double Cut and Conformer, and not only gets all creation but Leviathan as well, so ding, another trophy. Alright, enough stalling, time to take on Diamond Weapon. Cloud uses Cross Slash and Tifa uses Choco Mog to get the Diamond Weapon to open up and use Countdown. 
Then it's vulnerable to Yuffie's double cuts and Tifa's death blows. And a fair bit of ATB wick tricking sees Diamond Weapon go down and my first gold trophy pop in the form of Diamond Devastator. Then it's time to drop into Midgar once more. Elena gets the Yuffie double cut and Tifa death blow treatment and then after picking up some weapons in Shinra HQ it's time for Proud Clod. Which is simple enough to be honest, big guard into double cuts and death blows, firstly on Jammer armor and then the Proud Clod itself is good enough for this fight. I put Barrett in the party to get missing score and then back to Cloud Tifa Yuffie for Hojo. Again, same deal, big guard, double cut and death blow. First form I target Hojo, second form I target the highest target which is his body and the third form is more of the same. Tifa actually gets put to sleep by this form but Yuffie does more than enough to carry this one. As a reward I finally get my All Materia Mastered which pops the Materia Mastermind trophy for getting a Materia to level 5. After Cloud and Tifa get it on it's time to start cleaning things up. Starting with Bone Village I grab the W item Materia and the key to Midgar so that I can grab the Sneak Glove. Then it's time to take on Osbert Weapon and it's at this point that I start using the next trick in the book. The W item glitch lets you duplicate items by selecting the first item, then selecting the second and cancelling out of the target selection. Doing this repeatedly lets you duplicate the first item as many times as you want, up to 99. In this example I'm duping hero drinks. My ultimate weapon strat is to get two hero drinks on Yuffie and then let her use double cut twice while she has the curse ring equipped to deal 40,000 damage and it runs away. Then I chase it down to deal another 40,000 and that takes me straight to the Cosmo Canyon section which is the last bit. Where one more iteration of this takes it down and I grab Ultima Weapon for Cloud. This opens up the Ancient Forest where I pick up Slash All, Typhon and Apocalypse. Now it's time to use the W item glitch to duplicate sources. I can't normally do this because the sources are not a battle item which the previous version of this trick requires but there is a workaround thanks to Morph. So I firstly need to have only one of a cheap battle item such as a potion and I need to use up all my power, speed and luck sources. I head to Mount Nebel where I run into a Morning Star. I use Yuffie to morph it into a power source but before the animation completes I need to use W item to use the potion and wait until the end of the animation and the power source appears in the item menu. Then I carry on the glitch as normal and instead of duping the potion, the trick now dupes the power source that took its place. I do this for 99 power sources and give them up to Cloud. I also head back to the Gelnica and do the same for this Nautilus thing and Jellyfish thing for speed sources and luck sources and funnel 198 of each into Cloud as well so that he is now mega overpowered. Oh yeah and I also pick up the Hades Summon and the Highwind item too. I also get the Titan material from Gongaga and head back to Junon where I buy the revive material for an upcoming fight and Villa to Cloud as well as a flex. I stick the Fury Ring on Cloud and blitz through the Shinra Mansion 2 in Nibelheim for Cosmo Memory as well as Odin and I also get to pick up Vincent at last. After a cutscene that now doesn't make sense I get the trophy for picking him up. I stick around Nibelheim and play the overworld theme on the piano to get Tifa's final heaven and then I use Slash All and Fury Ring to start getting all the kills in the Mithril Mines needed to get everyone's limit break similar to what I did with Aerith earlier on. This takes a long time so I use the 3 times speed function on the HD versions of this game to make it less tedious and eventually everyone gets their first level limit 3 abilities except Ket Shi who straight up gets slots and another trophy pops. I'll deal with the other limit breaks later. I go to Medeal and buy a year supply of HP plus materials for later purposes and then it's time to prep for the game's two super bosses. Firstly I W item dupe some spider webs hero drinks, megalixes, vaccines and dazers and turn the battle speed way down to the slowest it can be and ram headfirst into emerald weapon. The trick here is to start with a spider web on emerald and then get haste on everyone else and for hero drinks on cloud, vincent and yuffie in that order of priority. From there cloud's job is to double cut with the occasional meteor rain when his limit gauge fills. 
Vincent's job is to apply said hero drinks, and Yuffie's job is to make elixir everyone to ensure the party stays alive and attack when needed. When the shoulder lights come on, speed is of the essence as I need to get rid of the blue ones first as they deal damage, and then the yellow ones which only reduce MP. Failing to kill all four in time leads to Air Tam Storm which is essentially a game over. Once the lights are down, it's a rinse and repeat until the big boy goes down and I get a nice trophy for my efforts. I kill Vincent and Yuffie to prep for my next fight and in calm I hand in the earth harp that I got as a reward from emerald weapon for some master materia which gets me another trophy for obtaining the master summon materia. It's now time for ruby weapon, Vincent and Yuffie start off dead so that I can skip the ejection phase of the fight and then I get dazers to temporarily stop ruby weapon and spider web to permanently slow it down. From there I cast life to all on the party, Yuffie uses haste all to speed them all up, Vincent uses a vaccine on cloud so that cloud can't get touched by ruby weapons myriad of status inducing attacks. From here cloud uses knights of round, Yuffie uses dazers to keep ruby weapons stopped and Vincent uses mug just before cloud uses knights of round so that I can skip the entire animation and save 10 minutes of my life. Yeah, I should explain this. It's called the Vincent Mug Glitch. See, when Vincent has a certain weapon equipped and he uses Mug, the next attack's animation is cancelled, whether that's an ally's or an enemy's. So I line up Mug and Knights of Round to go off one straight after the other so that I don't have to waste 90 seconds of my life every turn watching that goddamn animation. Ruby weapon down and my reward is a trophy to show off just how awesome I am. I also get this golden chocobo which means I can now visit the materia caves. The important ones are knight of round for a trophy and mime for limit break farming. To do this limit break farming I give everyone a boatload of powerful summon and magic materia to get their HP to plummet to just over a thousand. Hype them all up, give one the master command materia and a second mime and then fight a cactar on the hidden cactus island. The trick here is to manip the cactar then vaccine it so that it won't go back to normal once hit and then mini the relevant party members with shrivels. This means that their limit breaks will hit for one damage. From here you 1000 needles with cactar to build the limit gauge to full, use the limit break and then mime it until you've learned the next limit break. Once you've done that, cast Dispel on the Cactar and then remove to end the battle. Rinse and repeat for everyone. There's two limits you need to watch out for. There's Red 13's Howling Moon because it casts Berserk, in which case you need to vaccinate him before you mini him. Then there's Sid's second and third levels which have a chance of causing death. In this case I cast Death Force on Cactar before tossing it a vaccine. With those done, I give Barrett, Tifa, Yuffie, Red13 and Sid their level limit 4 items and 5 more trophies pop up. I also grab Chaos from Lucretia's cave for Vincent's level limit 4, getting me another one. Then it's off to Battle Square where a stupidly overpowered cloud blitzes through everything and I grab Omnislash as a reward for getting 32,000 battle points and another trophy. Then I buy 3000 GP by talking to this hidden NPC repeatedly and just buying the stuff from him instead of earning it. I pick up experience plus and guild plus materia from Wonder Square and do the G bike minigame again and get another trophy for passing 10,050 points. The final area is here which means it's time to grind. I head to this one part of the northern cave, stick an apocalypse on cloud and fill it with all materia and stuff HP plus materias in all the other slots. Oh and don't forget to give cloud experience plus and guild plus as well. Then it's a simple case of chucking elixirs at magic pots and then hitting them to defeat them. There's also movers which die pretty easily to slash all or Yuffie attacks. Once an all or HP plus materia is mastered, I take it off and replace it with the freshly created one. I have unlimited elixirs thanks to the W item glitch, so after about an hour of running around at 3 times speed, throwing and creating elixirs and farming master materia, I finally crack level 99 on cloud for leveling liege. I then have to crawl my way back out and sell all my master materia for the coming up all 9 trophy for hitting 99,999,999 gil. I wish I could say that the rest of the game was a thrilling battle of wits and skill, but Genova Synthesis dies to quad cut, Bizarro Sephiroth dies to Knights of Round and Safer Sephiroth also dies to quad cut. 
one Omni Slash later and I get the Feat of Meteoric Proportions trophy for completing the game and the Gaia's Guardian Platinum.